All right, so the first thing that we're going to talk about in our part two of our class is um, to answer the big question. Are you sure you want to sell products online? And sometimes you might think, well, why would that question be asked? Obviously, I'm here if I'm going to, if I want to learn that. Obviously, I want to sell products online. But I'm going to give you the example. One of the biggest retailers, probably the biggest retailer online, is Amazon.com. They sell everything, literally. They started with books and then DVDs and what else? Diapers and cameras and food. I bought a big pallet of, of uh, fruit bars the other day. It was pretty good. So Amazon works great because there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that you never see, that you never hear about. Now you're going to need to know about all that behind the scenes stuff and manage it. So if I wanted to buy the brand new Fire TV stick right here, $39, all I would need to do is click on it, add it to my cart. I already have an account, so I'll just click buy. My credit card's already there. Let's say my credit card is not there. This is the first time I ever heard of this thing called Amazon. Um, which uh, I believe this year Amazon is going to celebrate their 20th anniversary. So if you haven't heard of Amazon, where have you been? It's either 15 or 20 years, one of those. They've been around a long time. But let's say I don't have an account. What I need to do is create an account, put my credit card in, press buy. And then in a week or, or so, or less, I get the Fire Stick at my home, I plug it in and I can watch TV. Well, a lot, of ha a lot of stuff happened between placing your order and you getting it at your doorstep. Uh, one of the biggest things that happened was the monetary transaction. You took out your credit card or debit card or whatever, you plugged in those numbers, and then behind the scenes, uh, Amazon spoke with your bank or credit card issuer and vouched that you had enough funds for that product. Once that has been negotiated, then the funds transfer to Amazon's bank account. That part of the transaction is done. And then your product comes off the shelf, a person or a robot, probably a robot, took it off the shelf, down a conveyor belt, over to the wrapping and shipping department, wrapped it up, gave it to UPS, FedEx, whatever. The, the postal carrier then took it cross country perhaps, on um, trucks or an airplane or something got to your local distribution center in San Diego, got to the local one in Chula Vista, and then your letter carrier took it from the local branch right to your doorstep, and you got your product. So all of that stuff that happened in the middle between buying and getting your product, we have to worry about now. We have to collect payment. We'll be able to collect credit card payments, PayPal payments, checks, I suppose, COD, if you're brave will be able to collect all of that kind of payment. Then you're going to have to deal with order fulfillment, which is then taking that product out of your garage and wrapping it up, and then either dropping it off at post office, USPS, uh, UPS, FedEx, what else is there, DLH, DHL, whatever, all of these shipping places. You have to pay for that, shipping. Then let the person know your item has been shipped. Then the person gets it, they can track it, then they get it, they have your item. Whoops, it wasn't the right item. Time for a refund. You're going to have to deal with refunds as well. That money that was then stored in your account has to be refunded, and so forth. So all of that easy stuff that happens because we're dealing with a big retailer, or even a small retailer, medium-sized retailer, you're going to have to deal with now. That's why I asked the question, are you sure you want to sell stuff online? Specifically, are you sure you want to sell stuff through your own website? Because you could sell stuff on eBay, and you could sell on Etsy, and you could sell on Amazon, and they take a care of a lot of the infrastructure. Now you're going to need to deal with that infrastructure. So that's what we'll be talking a lot about in this class, infrastructure, <coughs> setting it all up and making it work, all the nuances of that. And again, there's many solutions for this. Obviously, one of them is just sell your stuff on Etsy and don't worry about some of the details. Just sell your stuff on eBay. But the thing about selling on Etsy or eBay or Amazon is they take a cut. They take a cut of your sales because of the infrastructure payments. 
Amazon is running 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, in like 200 countries. So it takes money to keep the lights on. Newegg.com and um, Redbubble.com and a bunch of these retailers, it costs money to sell stuff. If you're going to sell through them, you're going to give away some of your profit to keep the lights on. Uh, I teach an Android development class. And in there, they also take a cut. If we sell our 99 cent app, the developer actually gets 79 cents or 70 cents because uh, Google takes 30 percent. Apple takes 30 percent because we're using their infrastructure. Well, if you have your own website, you can cut out a lot of that overhead. You can sell directly from your website, your way, set your prices and all of that. And so here I'm going to show you an example if you'd like to look at this. One of the clients that my company deals with, because not only do I teach this stuff, I also do it for real clients in the real world with a real company. This is one of the companies, uh, one of the clients that we have, akiastexcoco.com. A little hard to say and spell, but this is a restaurant with very good food. They have a website. Uh, my company developed it. It's got an e-commerce capability, so you can buy a taco, you can buy uh, tortilla soup, you can buy all of that great stuff. They don't deliver just yet, but what you do is you're buying, and then you can pick it up in store, or your food will be ready in the restaurant when you show up at your scheduled time. So I'm going to be showing you something real world for one of these clients. I'll show you other client examples with e-commerce as well. And I'm showing you what I've done, what my company has done for real clients, what we will be able to do. First of all, this whole site is WordPress. The whole site is WordPress. A custom theme, a customized theme. Um, probably making a lot of people hungry. Uh, I'm getting hungry too. But uh, we did everything on this site. We shot the photography, we wrote the text, we did the website, we planned the events and photo shoots and all of that stuff. The blogs, the e-commerce, social media. This is one of our full-featured clients. But if you'd like to check out Order Online at the top right, you have to choose a location first because they've expanded to Los Angeles last year. They're doing pretty well. So let's see here in San Diego. There's the various foods. Let's say it's getting cold in here, so we'll order a classroom full of tortilla soup. There's variations here, notice. 10 ounce, 20 ounce. You can do tacos, so we can do um, what kind of meat and what kind of taco. Let's say a grilled taco with uh, tripe. Um, a whole class set of those. Add to cart. I can continue shopping. Let me add that um, tortilla soup as well. This time I'll check out. So then I've got my checkout screen. Maybe a lot of people didn't want that taco. Okay, no problem. Remove it. So then we've got that food and uh, tax and total. Anyone would like to take their credit card out so we can <laughs> buy? So it's a le legitimate store like Amazon. But there is no cut uh, that is given over to Amazon or Etsy and so forth. Um, the owner sets the price that, that he wants, um, accepts the credit card payment and so forth, and here's a pickup time and then you can go on to purchase and it's a fully realized system and this is what we're going to be learning. It's customizable. It's not perhaps super customizable like you have in, in your dreams, but those super customized solutions are the ones that are very expensive, the ones that are proprietary. So this solution that I'm going to teach in the class probably works for between 90 and 95 percent of people that come to these classes. For some people, this is not enough. I can offer other suggestions. And perhaps then, even that is not enough. Maybe you need a super customized solution. There was a client that we talked with, 
several months ago that we ended up not taking the, the job because they wanted very, very, very specific kind of e-commerce. And for what they wanted, they really were not going to be able to get it for, the, for their budget. They, they had a certain kind of budget, and they kept saying, well, you know, when our store takes off, we'll be able to pay you. But for right now, can you do it for this amount? The answer is no. You can find other people, perhaps, that fit within your budget. But this, this stuff is complicated. If you took part one, it was all focused on, let's learn WordPress. And now in part two, let's learn e-commerce. You should know WordPress already enough uh, to be uh, relevant with it. And so this is what we're going to work with. Let me show you another client. Maybe you're not looking for some food. Maybe you're looking for some, some nice jewelry. So this, jewel, this up and coming jewelry designer, we did this site for her, Elsa Valencia, elsavalencia.com. She shot the photos herself. Uh, this is all handmade, um, 10 karat jewelry, um, with a website in, in WordPress also obviously with a different design and, and aesthetic, but it's also an e-commerce solution. It's also an e-commerce website, elsavalencia.com. I can go over to the shop. There's various items. These are some new ones. Snake bracelet, for example. I can add it to the card. I can go in and, and look at a larger version of it to really see the detail. This is all handmade, <coughs> handmade gold. Let's say we're going to add one here to the cart. There's a wish list as well here and social sharing buttons. So I add it to the cart, it'll calculate shipping and all of that once I add my... This one does ship to you, uh, and there's tax and so forth. So again, just like a real uh, website, you can pay with all major credit cards. And um, tax is added and all of that. So a different kind of product, but still similar items, uh, shopping cart ability, pay with any credit card or debit card, uh, done in WordPress. It can work for products, in this case, that are shipped. It can work for products like the other one where you pick it up. It can work for virtual products. Does anyone know what I, what I mean with by virtual products? Ebooks, music, um, photos, any of those things that are not a physical product but maybe a digital file so this will work with that as well you can sell your your audiobooks you can sell your your web seminars any item real or virtual you can sell services too so if you are an, uh, an interior designer you, what is your product well your product is your service your expertise of doing interior design you can do that with what we'll be learning in the class as well look at one more so maybe you're looking for something fun for the kids. Swapdots.com is a client that we have that they sell two big items. One of them are customized uh, bracelets. Uh, so you can get different sets of these bracelets that are different colors, different sizes. And then the kids have fun collecting uh, the different buttons. And uh, there's a variety of pre-made buttons, and then of course you can uh, upload your own design, your own drawing, your own family photo, your own logo. So works for corporate events, works for uh, parties, charities, all of that. So the way this one works is you can choose a button, or you, that is you can choose a bracelet and then add buttons, as many as you want. Same sort of thing, let's say I want I like this one. I want three of these. Add to cart. Maybe continue some shopping. I can add reviews. You can you'll be able to do that as well, adding reviews. 
I'll add a purple wristband to my order. And uh, I'm going to need it in uh, large. Oops, that one's out of stock. We'll go with medium. So this will be keeping track of product inventory as well if something sells out. Then I want to view the cart and check out. Is what I've got so far. Proceed to checkout. It's going to walk me through a process and then eventually pay with a credit card and such. And I've got um, another order placed. In addition to selling these buttons, uh, these are all handmade buttons basically and wristbands, they also sell uh, mom's animals, which are handmade yarn stuffed animals. So a variety of styles and designs, a variety of animals. That one's out of stock. Giraffe is very popular. Nice little horse there. And the same thing. So these are also shipped. So the owners of this uh, of this shop have a, a big tub of these animals and then they wrap them up, ship them and throughout the US and, and you get them. You're going to have to deal with that now. If you're selling physical products that are shipped throughout the US or internationally, you're going to need to deal with that. Wrapping it up, uh, shipping it, dropping it at the postal carrier, and um, dealing with returns and return policies and all of that. Notice there's frequently asked questions. Under the shop, there's the terms and conditions, all of that stuff that you'll have to that you'll have to deal with now, such as warning, choking hazard, and all of that that you might not have thought of because you simply bought something at a store, put your credit card, and you're done. Now you're going to need to think about these things because you're going to be liable for some things. You're going to want to be smart about things. You're going to need to deal with taxing and shipping, um, you know, sales tax and so forth, but then also income tax. You're going to be making money off of this, and you probably want to report this when income tax time comes. So there's a variety of things to take, it, to take into account now. You don't have to go as far as getting a business license and so forth. It's useful, and I'll talk about all of those aspects when we get to it. But that again goes back to the question, are you sure you want to be Amazon? Are you sure you want to be the next Amazon? Because you're going to have to deal with all of this. And this class will give you pretty much all of the tools to be on that path. And after you take this class, and if you took the last class and you get all of this knowledge, you may decide, yeah, I can do it. It'll be hard, but I've got two or three people that'll help me, or I can do it myself. I'll go for it. If it's too complicated, there's plenty of other out-of-the-box solutions that I'll be mentioning as well. They're not going to be as uh, perhaps affordable as this solution. The uh, WordPress WP e-commerce combo is for the low, low price of zero dollars. So you can set all of this up for free. You are going to pay for, however, your .com and, and your hosting. That's a, that's a given. WordPress itself <coughs> and the e-commerce plugin, those two are free. There's add-ons to give you more power to your store that'll range between $10 and $110. And then, of course, there's the big solutions that'll cost you like $500 a year. But it maybe it's the best solution for you, and you're going to make it up in two months. There's a lot of ways to, uh, to sell online. And in this class, as I said in the syllabus, we're going to be focusing on the WP e-commerce solution. So any questions so far? Okay, so, yes? Joomla and WordPress are the same enough in that they are both website creation tools. But, just like apples and oranges are, are both fruit, one's an apple, one's an orange. So what I'm going to talk about in this class won't exactly apply to Joomla because I'm going to be talking about specific software, specific plugins that only work in WordPress. Unfortunately, they don't make software really that goes back and forth between the two, because each one, Joomla thinks they can make a website the best way, WordPress thinks they can make a website the best way, Drupal thinks they can make a website the best way, Squarespace thinks they can make a website the best way, and therefore their software often does not communicate with each other very well. So you can uh, learn still a lot in this class, but you won't be able to apply it directly to Joomla. But I'll be happy to help during the breaks and such to give you whatever more help I can give. Any other questions? 
Okay, what we're going to do is, uh, we'll do it a little bit earlier than usual. We're going to take our first break because what I want to do is I want to give you a chance to print out the instructions that we're going to work with. Um, so we're, we'll take... Yes, let me, let, me, let, me get, let me get to that for one moment.